Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Naya Heroes token deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. We're playing the full playset of Hero Precinct 1 as a 2 mana 2 2 that gets to make a 1 1 white human creature token whenever we cast a multicolor spell. And almost every single card in this deck is multicolor, so the hero will make lots and lots of human tokens. And then we also have the full playset of Hero of the Nyxborn from Theros Beyond Death as a 3 mana 2 2 enchantment creature that when it enters the battlefield gets to make a 1 1 white human soldier creature token and whenever we cast a spell that targets here of the nixborn creatures we control get plus one plus so until end of turn so nice little anthem effect and to synergize with the hero's ability we're playing two copies of phalanx tactics which is the only other non-multicolor card in the deck except for hero precinct one as a two mana instant giving target creature we control plus two plus one until end of turn and each other creature we control gets plus one plus one until end of turn which is great with a bunch of tokens in play and then of course we'll trigger the hero's ability which means means we'll give our other creatures plus two plus one instead of simply plus one plus one which is a very powerful effect for just two mana and then the other synergy with the hero of the nixborn is integrity intervention which we can use the integrity half for one mana as a pump spell giving target creature plus two plus two until end of turn and it also happens to be multicolor so it still synergizes with our hero of precinct one and then we're also playing green so we get access to those powerful selesnia token synergy cards so looking at the entire deck at one mana we've got the full playset of flower flourish since we are relying on the flower half to find a basic forest or basic plains in our deck and uh, put it into our hand and it also counts as a one mana multicolor spell to trigger hero of precinct one so it not only helps us uh, smooth out our draws but it also helps trigger the hero and then later in the game if we do happen to have six mana we can cast the flourish half which gives all our creatures plus two plus two until end of turn so another nice anthem effect then we have the full playset of integrity intervention we're mostly going to use the integrity half as a one mana pump spell but every now and then we might also use intervention as a four mana lightning helix dealing three damage to any target and gaining three life which also gives the deck a little bit of reach if we need to deal those last points of damage then at two mana we've got our hero of precinct one We've got the full playset of Sky Knight Vanguard as a 2 mana 1 2 flyer that whenever it attacks gets to make a 1 1 white soldier creature token that's tapped and attacking. So another 2 drop that can generate some tokens. And then we also have three copies of Amara, Soul of the Accord, which is legendary, so that's why we're not playing the full playset. But another very powerful two mana token maker, since Amara gets to make a 1 1 white soldier creature token with a lifelink whenever it becomes tapped. So if we're just attacking with it, it will work. But we also have a few Convoke cards in the deck that can help us uh, tap Amara without it needing to attack. And then we've got our two copies of Phalanx Tactics, which can be a nice blowout if the opponent doesn't expect it. Then at 3 mana we've got our Hero of the Nyxborn, and then we have two copies of Tajik, Legion's Edge, which is a great follow-up to any of our 2-drop creatures, as a 3-2 with Haste and Mentor, so we get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on one of our smaller creatures that's also attacking. And Tajik also has this useful ability that prevents all non-combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures we control. So if the opponent is playing sweepers like Deafening Clarion, Tajik can essentially sacrifice himself to save the rest of the team, which is uh, very powerful since we are otherwise soft to sweepers like the Clarion and can also potentially gain first strike. And a great reason to go into a third color is that we also get to play with Domri Anarch of Bolas, which has been overperforming in this deck as a three mana planeswalker, giving creatures we control plus one plus oh, so a nice anthem effect for the entire squad. And then the plus one can help us ramp, adding a red or green mana to our mana pool, and also makes our creature spells uncounterable this way, which can be useful. And the minus two gives us access to a fight ability, which gives us some removal, otherwise our deck doesn't have a ton of interaction. And then we also have two copies of March of the Multitudes, which is a nice late game finisher as we get to sink a bunch of mana and tap a bunch of creatures with the Convoke mechanic and get to make X 1 1 white soldier creature tokens with lifelink, which can potentially happen on the opponent's end step and surprise the opponent. And then we can maybe follow it up with an anthem effect like the Phalanx Tactics to close out the game. And then at 4 mana we've got a full playset of Outlaws Merriment, which can be a bit slow in some matchups, but it does help give the deck more resilience against sweeper effects, as we get an enchantment that at the beginning of our upkeep makes a token at random between a 3-1 Human Warrior with Trample and Haste, 
a 2-1 human cleric with a lifelink and haste, and a 1-2 human rogue with haste, and when this creature enters the battlefield, it deals 1 damage to any target. And then last but certainly not least, we have 3 copies of Trostani Discordant, as a 5-mana 1-4 legendary creature, giving other creatures we control plus 1 plus 1, and when Trostani enters the battlefield, we also get to make 2 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens with a lifelink, and then also has a clause which can help out if the opponent tries to steal our creatures. And then going over the mana base, we're only playing 21 lands, but that's also because we're relying on flower to get us an extra basic. And so we have two plains and two forests that we can search up. And then we have all 12 shock lands for stomping ground, for sacred foundry, and for temple gardens. So our mana base is somewhat painful if we're up against an opposing aggro deck, but sometimes we can afford to play a turn behind and just play our shock lands tapped. And then we have four copies of Temple of Triumph and one Temple of Abandon. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. Fine opening hand. Can use a scry to look for a third land, perhaps. And then I can go turn two hero, turn three, flower, get a land, play Vanguard. And set up uh, for Trostani. Don't need a second Trostani. Double hero. Now, drawing the third land would let me play the hero before we play flower, which of course would be pretty good. Otherwise I might still go for the flower into vanguard play. We already have double white, so I can probably get a forests. A red black. The hero might not survive. That's gonna be a Witch's Oven, so it's a sacrifice deck. Do we see a claim the firstborn on the hero? Yep. So that's in the oven. If they have a Mayhem Devil, that's gonna be hard to beat since that just kills all our tokens. I did somehow draw the third Trostani despite bottoming one. Alright, I guess I'll just... Hmm. I guess I do need to build up towards 5 mana for Trostani, so I should prioritize hitting my land drops. So I think I will cast Flower into Hero. And get a Forest. Ghost Rider makes an appearance. And now we just gotta build up our uh, token army. Could technically attack, but I would still trade with the Phalanx Tactics, so that doesn't seem great. Sadly, Trostani doesn't quite work the way we want to against Claim the Firstborn. Fervent Champion, that's alright. Second Fervent Champion, alright, it's a bit unexpected. I guess I'm down to use this Phalanx Tactics defensively. So after first rank damage, they sack one to the Strider, another one to the Oven. Alright, a land for Tristani is great.
And now we can start attacking. Still gonna hold the hero back, since I don't necessarily want to trade it for the Strider. But everything else can get in there. And Trostani also gives us a bit of protection against the potential Mayhem Devil. So what do we want to draw at this point? Outlaw's Merriment would be good. Integrity Intervention can maybe take care of a Strider or Devil. And then uh, I guess our Anthem Effects, Phalanx Tactics and maybe Flower Flourish with one more land. Alright, Croxa is going to get our last cards. And how close are they to getting it back? Well, they could with another red source. It's going to be a Dreadhorde Butcher for the time being. Well, a 6-6 six, six is going to be difficult to get past. Probably want to play land, so if we top deck Flourish we can cast it, and it would take 3 damage from Croxa regardless. And then for now, everything except for Trostani and Hero can attack. Sky Knight Vanguard's definitely doing some work. They should probably trade for the life linking tokens instead of the other ones. All right. Well, even if they escape Croxa, we might have lethal next turn. They could potentially sack food to gain some life. So we're at 15. And our opponent has a Titan of Death's Hunger in play. But yeah, opponent's dead on board. So yeah, despite a bit of an awkward start, we managed to get there mostly thanks to Trostani and the Sky Knight Vanguard pumping out tokens onto the next one. All right, we're on the play. And this hand could use a, an extra land along the way, but as an opening hand, it's not bad. We've got both tactics and integrity to combo with heroes, so hopefully we get to see that in action. Turn one spitter. Yeah, I'll still play the Vanguard. Vanguard's gonna get stomped. Got another one. And then flower, I guess is fine. I get to flower, play hero. It's kind of like drawing a tap land. And that gets my double white in case we draw merriment. Vanguard gets shocked. And Lightless Stage finds two lands. Opponent maybe thinking about what one drop they want to play, or maybe another Lightless Stage. Yep. Lightless Stage finds lands Ginger Brute, so at least one of those lands will be wasted. And Tristan is pretty good against Monorats. So hopefully they'll be out of answers by the time we play Tristani. Alright, so probably go for it now and then next turn I can maybe play a flurry of pump spells on the hero to pump up the team. Don't really want to trade for the giant at the moment. Hmm. 
another Ginger Brutes. So they might be on the Cavalcade version of the red deck. Just two damage with the Brutes, that's not too bad. I'll take it. And yeah, I mean, next turn we're dealing a ton of damage. Get to untap, another integrity, wow. Well, this is gonna be good. Let's turn all our creatures sideways. Put on, let's uh, it go to damage. So let's lead with the phalanx tactics. Integrity. And another one for good measure. Well, let's see how much damage this is. More than enough. Alright, sweet. Good to see the hero of the Nyxborn in action here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, missing red mana, so this is gonna be hard to keep. This is better. And what do I wanna get rid of? So turn one flower, turn two Amara, I think over Vanguard, turn three, I can choose between Tajik and Domri. So probably means I get rid of the Vanguard. Although Vanguard plus Domri is pretty cool too. And then I probably want to prioritize getting a plane so we have double white for the merriments. Well, this Lovestruck Beast is going to be a pretty annoying blocker, so... Gotta try and get in some damage while we can. And then I guess we can rely on our evasive threats. Maybe use Domri to finish off the beast after it blocks. Three three Zurt on defense can at least still trade for it. But yeah, not the start we were hoping for. Can be a pelt collector into another Zurtai instead. Well, at least Domri can take out the pelt collector for the time being. And then I could cast Flower, but I probably save this because we're pretty close to casting Flourish. And then I can't use the mana ability this turn. Yeah, I don't think uh, Emara wants to attack. Spellbreaker. Ala Domri. I guess I'll just eat the token. And then... Let's see what's on top. Integrity Intervention should be okay. And we'll save the Flourish. This might be an Ember Cleave. Opponent's definitely thinking about it. Alright. I don't think I mind, all things considered. Because we're also gaining a bunch of life from our tokens. And I can intervention to Zurta. 
probably do it now in case of any pump spell shenanigans. Let's see, I don't have lethal, do I? Yeah, couple points short. And then next turn, uh, untap land for flourish could be game. This is maybe a Domri's ambush. So we're gonna ambush with the spellbreaker. She gets in for ten. Well, we're pretty much all in on drawing a land for Flourish, and there it is. So that should be game. Alright, sweet. The uh, Lovestruck Beast never got cast, but uh, managed to beat a pretty good draw from the Gruul Aggro deck, which can be a tough matchup as it has a bunch of big creatures. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, the sand seems okay. Bit creature light, only the vanguard, but hopefully we can find one more. Turn one hateful Eidolon. Well, I don't think uh, there's much I can do if they have a Myers Grasp or a Deadweight here. Hopefully they don't. It's gonna be a Bond of Flourishing instead. And then if they block the 1-1 one -one token with Eidolon, I can use my Integrity to maybe ambush the Eidolon. Bonus going to attack. So yeah, using a pump spell is not going to save my vanguard, because it's still going to have the enchantment attached and then die as soon as we untap. So I guess we just uh, keep this Trostani, attack, get our token, and then next turn I have the option of using Intervention to kill Eidolon, or I can just play the Merriments. So we're point on a black green enchantment deck, probably has Satassin Champion in there. I long gets in for one. I think I prioritize playing the uh, Merriment for now. And get that going. Might want to save the intervention to kill something bigger, like this here Dread Presence. Can deal one damage to something. Probably just the opponent's face. Now I could attack first and if they block I can use Phalanx Tactics and play Vanguard. Might be better than using Intervention this turn. Mogus's favor, pretty effective against our tokens too. Second hateful Eidolon. And the dead weights, yeah. Opponents going off here with all these Eidolons. And a Nassian Wanderer. Domri can help us find one of the Eidolons. So let's see. I guess I can attack if they block. I can tactics and then second main Domri can fight. Opponent 
opponent takes it. And then we can find Vanguard on Eidolon. Wow, casualties of war. Getting a clean 4 for 1. That's painful. Well, hopefully the Strasani can save us. Another dead weight. Takes care of the 4 2. And what does Vraska do? I leave dead bodies wherever I go. Ready to join them. Don't dwell. Vraska's gonna plus, sacking a land. Go after Vraska. That works out. Dread Presence into Swamp. Can take out a token. Everyone is expendable. Taggart Intervention, pretty good too. Alright, let's uh, see here. Do I still want to attack Vraska? I probably do. Bono lets it happen. And then I probably just kill the Dread Presence now. Alright, and our opponent packs it in. Well, did not think we were winning that game, but uh, I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we don't have any red mana. But this hand could be functional without it for a while, so I'm willing to give it a shot. Combination of March and Trostani definitely gives this hand a powerful late game. And then I can play the hero before we play Flower. Alright, Temple's a nice draw, so this turn play Hero. And next turn Temple plus Flower, probably Flower first so we don't mess up the Scry. Up against green, mono green at the moment. Integrity could be nice too. So let's make sure to keep up white mana in case we need to use a pump spell. And probably doesn't matter too much, we'll get a planes. Not our hero, I guess is nice. Let's just go hero into Vanguard next turn. And then we'll have tons of tokens to convoke this march. 
Eurofo does enable the Karyotid to make two mana and pumps the Pelt Collector. I don't really mind blocking and using Integrity. Rabbit Bites. Well, using Integrity doesn't really help here, since it's not an actual fight. So we'd just be making one token. But I could eat the Pelt Collector, which might be worth it. So the ground is going to get pretty stalled by this green deck. So having the evasion from Vanguard is going to be important. But maybe we can go wide enough with the march that it doesn't matter. Wicked Wolf is a good one too. Takes out the Vanguard. And Yorvo gets in for five. And a Lobstruck Beast to boot. Alright, I guess we're doing this. And then probably Convoking March for X equals 3, which makes 5 tokens total. Alright. Well, hopefully they'll be out of removal for Tristani now. Probably take nine. Could chump your vo. But we're also gonna potentially gain a bunch of life back here. Alright, well, we had a very good draw, but our opponent had plenty of interaction here to keep us off uh, completely going off. Wow, training to give Yorvo Trample, that's a nice one. But can they afford to attack? It's definitely a close one. And a Voracious Hydra for X equals 2. Takes out a Lifelinker. At least they felt pressured enough to play now instead of waiting to maybe kill Trostani. But it does allow them to make a big attack. So... Can block the wolf. Eat a token. I would gain 2, so I'm at 14, and I'm taking 13. And then they should be dead on the way back, opponent stepped out. Alright, sweet. So yeah, our uh, Naya tokens deck performed quite well. The major issue is often the mana base. Having all three colors in your opening hand is pretty key. But if it gets to play its spells on curve, and especially if it's on the play, it can have some very powerful openings. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.